Welcome back to Cape Chronicle. James Brubaker is an English professor at Southeast Missouri State University and the author of two collections of short stories. He's also working on his first novel. One of his short story collections, Liner Notes, won the Subito Press Prize for Prose. Another collection, Black Magic Death Sphere, Science Fictions, recently won the Press Gang Prize at Butler University. The latter book has not yet been released. James Brubaker, thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Wait, let's talk a, a little bit about, uh, about liner notes first. Um, what's, what's, what is, what's the kind of the overarching theme behind the, uh, the, the, the short stories in liner notes? Um, all the stories in liner notes are about music in one way or another. Um, you know, whether it be about uh, musicians, um, you know, out working in the world or how you know, our own experience sort of intersects with music, um, or about, you know, actual existing uh, musical figures from pop culture. Uh, so yeah, just sort of, I wanted to explore uh, what music means to us as, as, a, as a people, I guess, and uh, yeah, so the stories all do that. <laughs> so are these, are these um, uh, uh, real historical musical figures or, or, living, or living musicians that are, that are often the characters in, the, in, in these stories? It's a little bit of both. Um, you know, uh, the stories about musicians, some of them are totally fictionalized or based off of, of real characters. And then there's also, you know, a story about Flavor Flav called uh, Flavor Flav travels through time and reads about himself on Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> Phil Spector shows up in a story, Brian Wilson, and, um, and then Albert Eiler shows up in a story. There's a brief cameo from Michael Stipe um, <laughs> in another one. So, so <laughs> um, do, you, do you use elements of the of musicians' real lives as part of your stories? Yeah, some of the stories sort of have a, a hybrid feel to them. You know, there's a little bit of nonfiction worked in. Um, you know, the, the Flavor Flav story was pretty heavily researched because um, it, it sort of started as an essay because I wanted to try to parse, you know, how does Flavor Flav, a public enemy, you know, become Flavor Flav of reality television on VH1. Um, and, you know, through that, it sort of evolved into a story and the, the Phil Spector and Brian Wilson pieces are... Um, almost just sort of sketches that explore their, the, the mythology surrounding them as, as cultural icons. Yeah, you seem to use some, some humor in, uh, in, 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 a lot of your, in a lot of your stories. Um, uh, is, that, I mean, is that something you were, you were, you were striving for, is, to, is, to, is that use of humor? Yeah, I think humor is really, really important um, in my writing. Um, you know, I go to a lot of dark places, I think, emotionally, a lot of dealing with loss and, and death and grief and, and whatnot, um, humor kind of helps, <laughs> helps keep people grounded <laughs> and keeps things from getting too depressing. Why, why, why is um, musical kind of some, some fertile territory for those, for those dark places? Um, I think that there's a lot, and there have been a lot of connections made in, in research and whatnot over the years between music and memory. And I think that's probably something that we've all felt where we've heard a song you know, that maybe we haven't heard in a long time, or maybe it's one that we hear all the time, and it immediately makes us think of, of something from our past. Um, and so just that sort of unraveling of memory, I think, is, is pretty uh, you know, good territory to explore those kinds of emotions. You know, I understand you, uh, you have, a, you have a, a selection that you like to, that you like to read from, 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 your, from liner notes. Yes, um, it's, a, it's a really brief passage. Um, let me set it up real quick. It's a... Uh, the speaker in the section is a, a musician who's studying with Albert Eiler, or Albert Eiler's his mentor, and this musician's having trouble sort of reaching the emotional heights he wants to. And, and, uh, and, and Albert Eiler's a... Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. He's a, he's a, he was a jazz saxophonist from the 50s and 60s who met an untimely fate. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so... I could feel Al's eyes picking me apart, scrutinizing my every note. My nerves got the best of me. I missed a couple of sixteenth notes. The sour tones filled the room, stung my ears. But Al told me I was doing fine. Just like that, he said, good. So I played more wrong notes, shifted into a minor key. My solo veered violently off course from what I'd intended. With my eyes closed, with Al watching me, I felt time stand still, then speed up. 
I saw the place I lived in, the same place I live in now. I saw it burn to the ground. I saw everyone I've ever loved dead and gone. I saw the sky open up and spit giant bolts of lightning that tore through the streets and sidewalks and the crust of the earth to dig up old bones. Ancestors and their friends and their ancestors and their friends. And I watched as they melted into pools of yellow sap, then dried and became white dust. I felt everything disappear around me until all that was left was me. A single light, not at all noteworthy, flickering somewhere in the universe. Just a plain, dim as a basement light bulb, incapable, <clears throat> incapable of illuminating the expansive nothingness around me. Well, these are some pretty big ideas <laughs> that uh, that you're able to that you're able to, to to bring about here through the work of uh, of, a, of a jazz musician. Yeah, um, I mean that. Oh, oh no, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, it, it, uh, you know, the story is about sort of the the speaker. You know, that musician sort of struggling to. Um, breakthrough in the way that a lot of jazz mu musicians have because he can't really commit to, um, I guess, the emotional, or he can't commit the emotional, re emotional resources necessary to, uh, to play that kind of music. Well, Liner Notes is, is, is out and it's available mm -hmm. for purchase now. You have another book um, that will be published, I believe, uh, later in 2015? Yeah, it will be coming out next November. We're just starting the editing process of that now, getting it all polished up. And that's uh, Black Magic Death Sphere Science Fictions. Is what's the what's kind of the uh, the overarching um, idea behind this collection? Um, that one I just sort of wanted to play in a in a the sandbox of science fiction. Some of the stories are more or less uh, straight up science fiction. Some of them are more, um, I guess, not quite parodies, but are just playing with science fiction tropes in a in a fun and playful way. We've been talking today to James Brubaker. He's an author and an English professor at Southeast Missouri State University. James, thank you so much for coming by. Thanks so much for having me.